Felipe Nazza has always been a fast racing driver, but he kept that fact from his mother. This created a bit of uh, tension inside the family because I was doing something I, I started liking, but my mum didn't know about it. She wasn't very happy. Three successful years in GP2 started off with the Dams team, where he finished the season in 10th, with his teammate Davide Valsecchi winning the Drivers' Championship. And through the final chicane, Ericsson having a look at Nazza, terrible traction out of the corner from Colada. Nazza's got him over the line, just! 2013 and 2014 saw him drive for the Carlin team alongside Julian Palmer, and they had an intense rivalry, most notably at last year's Hungary race. And into turn two, Nazza and Palmer, first and second on track, first and second in the championship. Nazza edging Palmer towards the side of the track. Palmer keeps it stuck in and the back end kicks out over the grass now. Nazza somehow holds on to the position. He's had a number of incredible drives, including the Russian sprint race, where he still finished on the podium despite an unfair drive through penalty. That's when Salba came knocking on the door. Felipe Nazar was a clear talent, and it was to nobody's surprise that he was announced as Salba's first driver for the Formula 1 2015 season. It has always been my dream, since I began motor racing when I was 7 years old in go-karts. This desire to reach Formula 1 came to me and I, and I just feel very happy to have achieved it. But that's the first part of the dream. I think the second one now is to work on, on the progress and uh, one day to become successful in Formula 1. Can he follow in the footsteps of Ayrton Senna and Nelson Piquet? He certainly has potential. So after three years of GP2 action, Felipe Nasa was ready for his first race in Melbourne. To our viewers from around the globe, you join us just as today's practice session for the Australian Grand Prix is about to start. The teams will be visiting tracks across five continents as they battle it out for both the drivers and the constructors' championships. What race on the calendar do you think the teams will have a special eye on this year? Well, I think the teams will be looking forward to the Mexican Grand Prix, which is being held back at the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez in Mexico City. It was last run way back in 1992. This year sees Honda return to the sport, reforming one of the greatest partnerships in F1 history with McLaren. Do you think they can rekindle the success they had during the 80s and the 90s? It won't be easy, but yes, I think so. It's been a tough few years for McLaren with the loss of Hamilton, Mercedes withdrawing as a shareholder and major investor in the team, and losing technical director Paddy Lowe. This could mark the start of their return to prominence. Hey guys, what is up? It is Stopmat 99 Chit here, and I am back with a brand new F1 2015 video today. This is the start of my F1 2015 career mode series with Sauber driver Felipe Nazza. So after three years in GP2, Felipe is finally here for his first Grand Prix here in Albert Park, Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix. And obviously, I'm going to take you guys through his first weekend to see how he gets on here. He is now in the pinnacle of motorsport. As you can see, loading up the setup now. A nice little animation there with the, ta the engineer giving you the tablet. And obviously, at the moment, I'm sort of not really used to setups. The setups are a little bit different on F1 2015. They're not exactly the same as they were on F1 2014. Not too much different. But as you can see, coming towards the end of the practice now, towards the end of our third lap here, and actually, this lap has been pretty tidy so far. Felipe, one problem that he did suffer was braking. He really did struggle with the braking at certain corners on the track. Obviously, that's something you have to get used to in Formula 1, especially with these new V6 hybrid cars. The braking is a lot trickier in them. But as you can see now, at the end of practice, we did end up 11th after originally setting a time good enough for 7th. But that is Marcus Ericsson in 7th place there. So that is kind of promising. That does show that perhaps we are the best of the rest after the Williams, Ferraris, and Mercedes. So we've got to wait and see here. As you can see, Jensen Button, Daniel Ricciardo, not setting a time for whatever reason. But I think... Felipe Nazza, fastest time on the prime, so he can be quite confident going into qualifying. But let's see how he gets on. So, without further ado, let's get into the qualifying report. The sun was shining for the first qualifying session of the season as the lights went green in Melbourne. All focuses on the rookies as fans from around the globe were eagerly anticipating the start of the session. Lotus's recent partnership with Mercedes gave people the impression that they'd be fighting at the top. However, a spin for Romain Grosjean saw him all the way down in 18th with Maldonado only 5 positions further up. McLaren was still struggling with their Honda power unit, but team principal Ron Dennis was pleased with Jensen Button's result of 12th place. Alonso would line up in 16th. Max Verstappen has become the youngest driver ever to race in Formula 1, and people had high expectations, although his first qualifying session didn't go to plan, as he finished in 17th, with teammate Carlos Sainz impressing in 10th place. 
Force India's lack of testing may have affected them, but Hulkenberg and Perez certainly weren't going to let that dampen their spirits as they qualified in 11th and 14th respectively. The two Williams drivers of Valtteri Bottas and Felipe Massa were frustrated with their qualifying positions as they would only line up in 7th and 9th. Directly ahead of each Williams car were the two Red Bulls, Ricardo in 6th and Kafia in 8th. Although Christian Horner has said that their lack of power may hurt them in the race tomorrow. One of the major shocks of the session was that Lewis Hamilton could only manage 5th as he was 1.5 seconds off Nico Rosberg's pole time. Kimi Raikkonen got the better of Sebastian Vettel in the Germans' first race for Ferrari. The biggest shock of the session was that young talent Felipe Nazza got his Sauber car onto the second row of the grid which certainly caught everyone by surprise. The question was, would he be able to maintain that position and convert it into a strong points finish? It is now time for the Australian Grand Prix. The crowd are here and here in force for what is going to be a fantastic day of racing. Welcome to the Australian Grand Prix. What a great start to the season for Nico Rosberg. He's on pole for today's race. He'll be delighted with how qualifying went yesterday, but knows there's a lot of hard work to come before he can secure that race win. Well, Nico will be focused on the task at hand. He's on pole position, he's proven his speed, and if he can just stay out in front, he should be able to create a gap. So I think he's got a good chance of victory today, as long as he has no car issues along the way. It was a disappointing day for Fernando Alonso yesterday. He's starting further down the grid than he would have liked, but he'll still be hoping for a strong result today. Well, Fernando is a great starter, and he'll be looking to make up a few places on that first lap to try and get himself back into a position that he's more familiar with. So here we are then guys on the grid for Felipe Nasser's first race of his Formula 1 career here in Albert Park, Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix. As you can see by the strategy, the team are wanting us to do a two stop, although I think a three stop is more realistic. But we're going to have to see how the tyre wear goes in the first stint, because I know the tyres in this game can blow out if you do uh, push them that extra lap. Even that could make uh, the difference, even that small amount of time. But anyway, we are on the grid now. And the lights are illuminated by the drivers for Felipe Nazar's first race here in Australia. And the lights are out and away we go and Felipe Nazar completely forgets to start them. We've already been overtaken by Hamilton, Bottas and Daniel Ricciardo round the outside. Now going down into Turn 1, they are a lot fast this year. But Felipe has maintained 7th position for now. Although he does have Felipe Nazar... Felipe Massa behind him, who is incredible in the straight line, obviously, with that Williams car that he has, the Mercedes power unit. Now, going down to turn three, Felipe actually breaks a little bit later and actually chips off a little bit of his front wing uh, at the back of Daniel Ricciardo, but I don't think that's going to affect his downforce too much in this first stint. As you can see, Nico Rosberg is currently leading. He's pulled up a bit of a gap, and then Sebastian Vettel in second, Raikkonen in third, and Hamilton in fourth after our bad start, but then Felipe Nazar looking down the inside of Daniel Ricciardo, but that was never going to happen, but obviously... I think Felipe Nazar has to, you know, focus on Ricardo, but also focus on Massa behind because Massa could become a challenge later on in this stint and obviously uh, the Grand Prix as a whole. But as you can see, Ricardo going pretty slow into that corner and Felipe Nazar running a little bit wide and he's got a pretty poor X. Now Felipe Massa will be all over him going up into the far chicane of turns 10 and 11 and Felipe Massa actually making the move up the inside and he has pulled off the move. He is up into 7th position. We're down into 8th position as Nazar hits the back of Massa, who's going incredibly slowly through that chicane, that must be said, obviously he was on the inside, so his racing line, so the line he was taking obviously was affected, but now we're going to try and make the move back up the inside here, and Massa actually moves out the way for us, so it was a bit of an easy move in the end, but two Brazilians battling it out here, obviously what Felipe Nasa really wasn't expecting was to be battling a Williams in his first Grand Prix, obviously the pace advantage that he has is absolutely incredible, now skipping on to lap 3, we have now caught up to the Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo, who is clearly struggling in the straight line, obviously Christian Horner saying, after the qualifying system, their straight line speed deficit may affect them, and it does seem to be affecting them severely here. As Felipe Nazar, we're going to go round the outside of Daniel Ricciardo. Will we be able to pull off the move round the outside, breaking down to the next corner? We've actually overcooked a little bit. We've gone a little bit wide into the gravel. And we're going to lose position to Ricciardo and Felipe Massa. And now we have Nika Hulkenberg behind us, but that was a, a rookie error there from Nazar. Obviously, just still not really getting used to the braking of this Sauber car in 2015. Obviously, he's having issues in practice, but as you can see, it's coming on to lap 7 now. We've got Lewis Hamilton here, currently leaving the Grand Prix. He has a moment round the final corner he slides a little bit and he has actually retired as you can see the car has gone down from 20 to 19 and Lewis Hamilton the leader is now out of the Grand Prix so that is absolutely crucial here so now I think that's Sebastian Vettel who's now leading the Australian Grand Prix as you can see our tyres are absolutely done so Felipe decided to pit in this half he could clearly see that a two-stop strategy was not going to work today so he decided to make the call 
to do a free stop strategy. And I believe that is a Lotus coming in behind us. I think that was Pastor Maldonado who was really catching us up at the end of this stint. Obviously, our tires were going off. And as you can see, loads of teams actually out in the pit lane. So we're not the only ones doing a free stop strategy today. As you can see, nice little pit animation here. Obviously, this is using the replay cameras. This isn't what you get uh, just with the onboard shots. But as you can see, coming out the pits now, let's see who we're going to be fighting against as we exit the pitch. You can see that's the two Mana Marussia cars and also Nico Hulkenberg who pitted a lap earlier. So he, we're fighting him for position. As you can see, Naz has gone a little bit wider getting all sorts of oversteer and we're actually being done by the two Manners here round the outside. What is going on? We're being mugged by the two Manners. Wow, Will Steven's going to go round the outside of the pair of us here. Roberto Mary also up the inside, but my goodness me, I never thought the day would come. Will Stevens round the outside of both of us. Wow, we need to look at a replay of that. That was incredible. As you can see, the two man's behind us. Felipe Nazza just, I think it does take a while for his temper, for his tyres to get up to temperature, but Roberto Mary got an absolutely mad one there. Bloody hell. And as you can see, Will Stevens, we're going three abreast down into turn three with the two man's. Who would have thought? You know, this is what dreams are made of. Felipe Nazza just dreamed of racing Will Stevens and Roberto Mary down into turn three at Melbourne. But as you can see, we did hold that position to Roberto Mary, but this is actually on board with Roberto Mary, who did go incredibly wide coming into turn two. As you can see, we had a bit of a moment and Roberto Mary just couldn't react. They actually ran wide and hit the wall and luckily didn't spin out or anything. But as you can see, skipping a little bit later on, we are behind Will Stevens, who's currently in 11th place. Obviously, he made that double overtake on both myself and Roberto Mary. But we've made the move very easy up the inside. Once again, backing off a little bit there as the inside, giving us the room because obviously we weren't really fighting for position. But now coming onto lap 10, we've got Daniel Ricciardo, who I believe has just exited the pits, actually. So he... The undercut didn't actually work, although we definitely have closed the gap on the Red Bull driver, so we've got to hope we can catch up to him come the end of this dip. But now, skipping on to lap 13, I think we're actually going to come into the pits this lap for our second stop of the day. Now, I think the thinking of this is that we're going to go onto the prime tyres and we're going to do an option stint at the end of the Grand Prix, so I'm not sure where this is going to put us uh, relative to the rest of the field, because I think most of the AI cars are also doing free stop strategies. We're going to have to wait and see as we get incredibly close to the outside wall there. Bloody hell. Felipe and are really running it fine here at the Australian Grand Prix. As you can see, Danny Kafiat currently behind us. We're currently in the Red Bull sandwich, or Kafiat will obviously overtake us as we pit. But so far, this Grand Prix has been pretty crazy, pretty full of action. Although that middle stint, apart from the start of it with the two manners, completely mugging us there. I honestly still can't believe that. Uh, this Grand Prix has been pretty action-packed so far, it's got to be said. As you can see, that is Verstappen and Marcus Ericsson battling going down into Turn 1. But I believe Max Verstappen and Fernando Alonso, who's currently behind us, I believe they're doing two stops. So, yeah, I think we'll be fighting there at the end of the Grand Prix. You can see our teammate Marcus Ericsson pitting in just before we catch him. I think we were going to overtake him on this pit straight anyway. Um, yeah, as, as you can see, Grosjean and Perez also pitting as well for Force India and Lotus. But now on lap 18, we have caught up with the Toro Rosso of Max Verstappen, obviously the youngest driver in Formula 1. Remember, Max Verstappen did start in 17th place, so to make his way up into 8th position is really not too bad whatsoever. You can see, we're actually going to try and make a move with Max Verstappen here. Up the inside of the chicane, we've actually pulled off the move here. What a move there from Felipe Nazar. Phenomenal stuff uh, from the Brazilian driver. This young driver is really just a true talent here. Look at that. Up the inside of the Toro Rosso driver, the up the inside of the 17-year-old. Phenomenal stuff here uh, from Felipe Nazar. As you can see now on lap 19, the tyres begin to go off ever so slightly already. Even the prime tyres, it was absolutely crazy in this race. The tyre on this game and oh my goodness me, having a massive moment there. Out of the final corner, getting a massive amount of oversteer. And Felipe Nazar there, very lucky not to crash into the wall and just about managed to recover there. Obviously a bit of tyre skidding there. Now skipping on to lap 22, we are making our final pit stop of the day. And what on earth is that? Anyway, swiftly moving on, we did change onto the option tyres, and I'm not sure where we're going to rejoin. We're going to have to wait and see. I believe it was Danny Kafiat and the Red Bull who was behind us when we made our stop. As you can see, that is a Red Bull in the distance, about to go through turn one. Felipe is going to have to get a much better exit than he did before. And as you can see, he's getting all sorts of oversteer once again. As you can see, Kafiat with the straight line speed advantage that he has in this at this current moment of time, he's going to try and go round the outside of us, going down into turn three. I think. Kafiat is going to try his absolute best. Very opportunistic move from the Red Bull driver. He's going to make his way up the inside. I think he has done it here. Although Felipe Nazar is going to try and defend it round the outside. But then he's going to have the inside for turn 5 here. And he has actually pulled off the move again. But then Kafiat, that's not it. Because Kafiat is going to try again. He's going to change his line. He's going to try and go round the outside here. And he's going on the grass then. Kafiat has actually made the move stick. As you can see, he makes a bit of contact there. And Felipe Nazar goes into the wall. And now Verstappen. Another two-stopper has actually overtaken him here due to that incident there. I'm not going to read too sure what happened. Let's have a look on board from Felipe Nazza. So going a little bit wide, and Kafiat sort of had to make his way back onto the track, and that was a sort of a racing incident there, I've got to say. It has cost Felipe Nazza a bit of time, but now it's catching up to the back of 
Max Verstappen on lap 22 going to go round the outside of him again. And oh my goodness, that was 10 times better than the first move. Round the outside of the chicane. Phenomenal stuff there from Felipe Nasa. Once again, a brilliant overtake uh, on Max Verstappen. Fantastic to see. Now, skipping on to lap 23, Valtteri Bottas is exiting the pitch just behind Marcus Ericsson, who is currently a lap down. Valtteri Bottas, who I believe is currently in third position, running very well today. And in fact, Ericsson runs a little bit wide, rejoins the track and crash into Bottas which has resulted in him losing his front wings. That's going to gain us a third position here up into sixth place. But as you can see, we're about to actually take sixth place anyway because we're about to overtake Danny Kafia round the outside here with the slipstream and with the option tyres. In fact, we actually ran wide. No, we have not. Once again, getting the braking completely wrong at that corner. And I think Verstappen is too far behind to make amends of our mistake there. But in fact, this is Bottas who has only got to this point on the track, so he's really lost some time here, and Bottas completely ruined his race that instant with Marcus Ericsson. I'm sure that Marcus Ericsson will get a penalty for that, because that was completely dirty driving there from our team. But obviously, I'm not going to complain, because it has helped Felipe Nazar out. An absolute treat, as you can see. Currently, not actually having DRS on Danny Kofiak, when I thought we were way within a second before the DRS detection point. But I think we might actually get him on the straight anyway, because Kofiak going incredibly slowly into turn one. Obviously, his tyres are pretty much dead, so... I don't know why the Red Bulls are doing two stop sticks. I also believe that Ricardo is doing a two stop as well. So we go up the inside of Danny Kofiak, up into fifth division. And what an amazing race this has been so far. And I think this could be our finishing position unless somebody else uh, retires or something like that. As you can see, Ricardo currently ahead of us, who I believe is a good 30 seconds ahead. So I don't think catching him today is almost impossible. As you can see, running on board with Daniel Ricardo now, currently in fourth place. A good drive from the Red Bull driver after starting in sixth position. But as you can see, his tyre has blown out. His front left tyre has blown out here with two laps to go. And his home Grand free heartbreaking stuff here for the Red Bull driver but for Felipe Nasa he could potentially get full position in his first Formula 1 race as you can see that is Ricardo going into the pit lane Felipe Nasa going around the outside and he is up into full position what an amazing race this has been for the Brazilian driver as you can see onto lap 29 now Nico Rosberg has won the Grand Prix and Felipe Nasa going to go around the last couple of corners now to take hopefully what will be Four positions. Kimi Raikkonen behind us in fifth place, who so I believe pitted an extra time. I think he pitted four times today. Also, a fellow Brazilian on the podium in the form of Felipe Massa in the Wims. It's a good day for Brazil as Felipe Nasa comes across the line for fourth place. Absolutely phenomenal drive from Felipe Nasa. What a race and what a drive uh, from the Brazilian driver. As you can see, Felipe Nasa getting out of his car now. Not actually looking too happy, but I think deep down underneath that crash helmet, he is absolutely ecstatic with today's result. What a drive from him. And as you can see, look at the race results now. Sebastian Vettel in second, Felipe Massa in third, with Kimi Räikkönen overtaking Max Verstappen on the final lap uh, to seal fifth position. But Verstappen also a very good drive considering where he started, don't forget. 17th, he made up 11 positions today. And um, yeah, as you can see, Kvyat finishing in seventh, but Alonso in eighth. The double points finished from McLaren, and then Maldonado rounding out the points with 10th place. But as you can see, Will Stevens in the end, finishing in 40th, but then Nico Hulkenberg making seven pit stops. But anyway, guys... Let's see how Felipe Nasa feels about this with an interview. Congratulations, thank you, thank you. Felipe! What a performance! Thank you, thank you. Well done. Thank you very what much. a what a debut! How did that feel out there as a drive? Well, I have to say uh, I was surprised. I, I didn't know I didn't know the circuit, so this this was the most important thing is to get the track time. It's, it's a difficult track. It was a good preparation I had this weekend. Uh, I couldn't ask ask for more. And the team they've worked hard for this for this uh, result, and I'm just so happy for them. As expected, Felipe Nasa is incredibly surprised with that result. But now looking at the constructors championship, we can see Ferrari currently leading with 28 points, with Mercedes uh, in second with 25. Obviously, courtesy of Rosberg's race win today. Obviously, Hamilton not scoring any points. Williams in third, and then Sauber currently sitting in fourth place with Force India and Manor still yet to get off the mark. Anyway, guys, if you have enjoyed this video, be sure to give a like and subscribe that'll be much appreciated as well as commenting your thoughts on today's video and i will see you next time bye bye